Hello everyone. Hope you are doing good. My name is Saurabh Bharati, Microsoft Dynamics 365 professional. This is my YouTube channel where I come and share my knowledge and experience with you all. So today's topic is bit different. It is not as usual like how I come and share and talk about some product feature in Dynamics. So today I'm going to talk about something different. So recently I have completed my 10 years as Microsoft Dynamics consultant and when I started my journey it was very difficult for me to understand that what should be my learning path what are the things which I need to keep in mind how should I prepare myself for the future right and apart from that a lot of times on the LinkedIn and other places I also get a question from many of you that how do we start preparing for functional consultant for the Microsoft Dynamics 365. So I thought to create this uh, video series where I, I thought like let's take one example that how this journey looks like, how you should prepare yourself for becoming the functional consultant, right? So in this video, I'm going to talk about what are the key factors you need to consider to become a functional consultant? What should be your learning path? What are the sources you should consider, right? What are the skill set you should consider? And this video is not specifically for anyone who is already working or not working in Microsoft Dynamics. So if you are even a working professional in any other uh, technology or area and you want to become functional consultant, in Microsoft Dynamics or if you are a college graduate who wants to become a functional consultant or if you are if you have just started your career in Microsoft Dynamics 365 and you want to understand that how do you improve on your things right so this video is for you I'll share my knowledge and experience so it's completely my perspective what I have learned over 10 years right so I'm going to share that what are the critical things are there and I'm going to start with uh, with the basics even if you do not know what Microsoft Dynamics is or what ERP is so let's start the today's video uh, let's go to the agenda so I'm going to give you about uh, the, the overview about the Microsoft Dynamics 365 what the typical project ecosystem for Microsoft Dynamics implementation of project looks like, what are the career opportunities you have and how do you prepare yourself? I have taken a finance functional consultant, but any fun, uh, any functional consultant which uh, for which you want to prepare yourself. Okay. So let's move to the next one. So this is quick about me. I hope if you are watching this video, you know, you know me, but yes, if you don't know me, this is my profile. I've been in the industry for 10 years recently. I completed that. I write blogs, create the videos on YouTube and that's my LinkedIn profile. So you can visit me, do ping me, let me know if you need any help. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about what is Microsoft Dynamics 365 finance and operations. So before we move to what is Microsoft Dynamics is, we need to understand what is this about, right? So Microsoft Dynamics 365 is an ERP. The full form of ERP is Enterprise Resource Planning Software. Okay. Now, what do we, why do we need the ERP? So it's a, it's a, it's a need for today, today's enterprises, right? What are the major characteristics we have? This is a system integration. This provides the system integration. So if you have different function in the organization, human resources, sales, purchase, finance, manufacturing, all these systems are integrated under same umbrella, right? So it's, it has a good system integrations. It operates in a real time. Uh, so if you post any information, if you, if you do any activity, right, you can have the output in a real time you can have the reporting and other things right 
centralized uh, information management system, consistent user experience, and single point of truth, right? So if you consider the older days, right, when technology started, right, and uh, 15, 20 years back, right, there was a time when a lot of enterprises were having the softwares in-house implemented, but the problem with those softwares were uh, was the was the these like they were having a lot of different systems so for example they might have one system which is just for purchase and inventory they will have one system for finance they will have one system for let's say human resource or manufacturing so there was a problem in 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 integrating these system the information was inconsistent right there was no better reporting available and that is where this ERP concept uh, has started becoming popular and now most of the organization if you see right they will have one or another ERP okay so before going to Microsoft Dynamics it we need to understand what ERP is so it's an ERP system what are the characteristics that we just spoke about okay let's move to the next one now, if you talk about ERP system, there are two possibilities which we, which any enterprise can have, right? So they can think of building their own system, so which we will be calling as the custom ERP, right? And one is the ready to use, right? So custom ERP is like uh, you decide that as per your business need, you are going to build the complete end-to-end -end ERP in-house and uh, you are going to hire a software development company or you are going to hire your internal technical team to build the ERP but it is very difficult job you it is not possible to build an ERP in a very short period of time it is going to take a lot of time a lot of energy a lot of money as well right and you also have a ready to use softwares which are available or the ERPs which are available and one of few of the example are Microsoft Dynamics 365 SAP and Oracle, they are ready to use ERP systems where as per your requirements and the considerations, right? You use them, configure them and use them. Okay. Hope it is clear. So let's move to the next one. So now, now we understood what Microsoft Dynamics is. It's an ERP. What type of ERPs? There are two types. Now we are into the second category where ready to use ERP products are there, right? Now we are going to talk about Microsoft Dynamics 365. We selected one of the product, okay? Now this is the history of Microsoft Dynamics 365. Uh, it was called as in 1998, it was uh, called, it started with the name Accepta and uh, Demgard was the company who was like, which was owning this and then it started growing. So 2000, uh, then 2002, it came with a version AX 3.0, uh, 6 4.0, X 2009, 2012, R2, R3, and 2016, when uh, when Microsoft launched the, the next version, which we generally call as the cloud version, the name was initially kept as AX7. But later on in 2017, uh, it was rebranded as a T3 Chef Finance and Operations, which we are right today talking about, right? And in 2020, again, Microsoft decided to call the different areas by the different apps. So you might see like T65 Finance, D65 Supply Chain, D65 Human Resource, so on, right? D65 Commerce. So they decided to call them by the different apps. And that's because of the licensing and the, the how the how Microsoft wants to operate within that. So this is about the history of Microsoft Dynamics 365. Now let's understand how the typical project looks like, who are the major stakeholders and other things are there. So if you talk about Microsoft Dynamics project in any project, there will be possibly three different stakeholders which are possible, right? So one is the customer who is implementing this Microsoft Dynamics 365. It means like they have purchased the Microsoft Dynamics 365, they have finalized this product and now they are going to implement this, right? There is Microsoft involved who 
charges for the licenses the subscription they also help on the product related issues there is if there is any bug or any issues are there in the base product and they also provide the uh, implementation support to have a better design and have the successful implementation and there is a team which is called as fast track team so that's the involvement of the microsoft then you have now you you purchase the licenses product and everything but as an enterprise you cannot go and implement this erp by yourself right you need to configure the system you need to understand what product uh, features and the capabilities you need to use right and that is where the third stakeholder comes here which is the partner so partner helps in the implementation uh, they deploy the consultants and then they manage end to end project and implement the uh, implement dynamics for the customer so majorly these are the three major stakeholders which you will find in any project now if you talk about the types of the project which you might see in the in the market is uh, i ha i mean there can be different types but i have broadly categorized into three so one is the implementation the implementation is like when you are uh, scrapping the legacy system and then moving to the d365 so let's say you are moving from sap to d365 right second is the support where you have microsoft dynamics 365 implemented already now you have to operate with that so you you are going to have the day to day issues support required and maintenance is required right so those kind of projects are called as support projects right and then you have the third category which is the upgrade project so as we just saw like microsoft has a history right the different versions have came into the picture right now some of the customer might be using the older version which is ax 2012 let's take an example and microsoft has stopped the support for that uh, version so now they microsoft is saying that you need to move it to d365 so that is the upgrade so when you are moving from the previous version to this version right then it's an upgrade project okay let's move next uh, so we understood like what microsoft dynamics 365 implementation project stakeholders are types of projects now let's understand the high level what are the different phases which are available so mind it this is not the methodology i'm talking about i'm just talking about broadly what are the phases what is the cycle which you will have in any of the project right so these are the known phases like you will i think i i think you you should be aware about so you start with analysis also called a discovery phase then you go to design and develop so uh, you talk about the solution design and things and then you test it and then you deploy the solution and then you up operate which is kind of a support or the maintenance right or hypercare we call it after go live right analysis is like mostly focused on you go to the customer you understand their business gather the requirement understand their pain points and things like that design and develop based on those requirement you identify how many requirements can be fulfilled directly using the features which are available for how many things which we need uh, which are the gaps for, for which we need to do there some development and then you do the development and once the solution is ready then you test it you test it internally test it with the users and so on and then you finally put into the uh, uh, production environment and the live environment and then you operate right so this is very high level the project phases okay let's move to the next what are the career opportunities okay but before that a quick recap before we get into the career opportunities if you are new to this complete whole erp world so now you understand what is erp what type of erp is we then uh decided and 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 selected that microsoft dynamics 365 is one of the erp which we are going to work on let's say then what is the history of d365 what are the different stakeholders are involved in that how what are the different project types you have and how the typical project life cycle looks like right so now we understand the complete project ecosystem so now let's move uh, let's understand the opportunity 
So before I, before I talk about what are the different roles are there and where you can apply for the roles, right, and prepare yourself, right, this is just an example which I have put down here uh, to understand that how the uh, the project team structure looks like in any uh, medium implementation, medium complexity implementation, right. So we start with the project. Now project, as I said, like there will be three stakeholders, the customer, partner, and the Microsoft. Microsoft will have majorly two teams involved. One is the fast track team who keeps the eye, who keep, who, who suggests us uh, to, to design a better solution so that we can uh, implement successfully. Then you have support engineers involved from the Microsoft side uh, who helps us in any kind of uh, product issues or the bugs which we are raging with them, right? Then you have the customer. I'll talk about the partner. So the, you have the customer. So customer might have one, the project sponsor who is sponsoring this complete project. Then you will have a program manager who is managing the whole program, the, this implementation upgrade or the support it is. Then you might have one who is leading and looking after the infrastructure from the customer side that uh, what are the different environments and the, all the all the technical support which you require from the infrastructure side. There might be someone who is the ERP manager. Now you can call this designation differently, but who is kind of managing or who is the major uh, or, or one point of contact between the partner and the customer here, right? Now this ERP manager can have uh, different people like we can call it as a business process lead or the system process owners, right? These are the people like business process lead, like, okay, you might have finance business process lead who will speak on behalf of the complete finance department, how the solution should look like, what requirements are there, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, because you cannot go to each and every individual users and talk about all these things. So you identify a business process lead. System process owners also uh, nowadays a lot of organizations hires uh, so they are the brace so they are, they coordinate with the business process lead and talk to the partner that whether any solution which is which which they are providing or anything which the business is asking uh, how that can be achieved whether it's a right approach or not so all these things are the responsibility of the uh, system process owners right. And as I said, it's just an example. You might have different roles as well. Okay. Now let's come to the partner. So how the partner is. So you might have a account manager or engagement uh, manager. Uh, you will have someone who is responsible for the delivery. So the delivery manager, then you will have one for the project manager, like who is going to manage the end to end project, keeping eyes on the timelines, resources and all those things. And then here you come with your solution architects, like who is responsible for end to end solution that how it is going to be designed across different areas, finance, supply chain, production, human resource, whatever is there in the scope, right? And then you might have uh, a functional lead who is going to lead a specific, uh, or, uh, all the functional streams. So that uh, the, the, and then you might have individual fun, uh, finance consultant, uh, functional consultant, sub, uh, supply chain, manufacturing, HR, HR, commerce consultant. So these are the different individual consultants which you might have. And then you might have one test lead who is responsible for testing the solution. And then you have technical architect and then tech leads are possible. And then your individual de developers who are going to make any technical changes, right? So this is a typical structure or the different roles with in any project team you might find right now few of the things which you, I have highlighted in the green are the potential uh, uh, things which you can start thinking about and these are the roles which you can start preparing yourself right so we'll talk about these things that how you can prepare for this. So let's move to the next one so these are the majorly available roles you will find in the in the market so you can apply for a functional consultant you can apply as a business analyst for the microsoft dynamics 360 project you can go into test or qa or you can even go for the project management role within the d365 or dynamics space right what what i understand personally right if you have prepare yourself for the functional consultant role. So definitely you can grab the opportunity on the business analyst and the test and test or QA as well. Okay, so there was some issue in my system and that is where technology plays with you. But anyway, I'm recording this 
as a second part of the video so i'll merge it but if you see some difference or something that that is the reason for this okay so so i was talking about the different roles which are available in the market so we were talking about this so if you prepare for your uh, prepare also for the function consultant role so you can apply on a partner side customer side a business analyst uh, which is just responsible for the analysis and design phase let's say the test or qa is just responsible for the test phase of the project right and the project management also if you understand the microsoft dynamics uh, ecosystem the knowledge about the microsoft dynamics product and if you are applying for a pm role it will definitely help you out there okay so now the next question comes that how do we prepare ourselves with this functional consultant role or the finance functional consultant role <clears throat> so one of the thing the major pillar okay the base to start with that is to have the product knowledge so you need to have the product knowledge now there are different courses for the different area so mb310 is the finance mb330 is the supply chain now you have mb335 330 i think uh, 320 has been scrapped but you need to find out the area where you want to uh, take your career ahead right so you where you want to become the fun, uh, functional consultant so it can be finance supply chain in my opinion if you are from the finance background if you understand the finance and other things you try that area if you do not understand that you can opt for the supply chain as well right so choose your area and have a good product knowledge that's the first thing second thing is the business analytics right so fun functional consultant is not about knowing the product no products or the configurations of the feature it is all about that how do you transform the business need or the customer need right to the product right how do you design the better solution which is best for the customer right it's not about what good feature you have in dynamics but whether it can be utilized for the customer or not that's important and to know that to understand the business need you need to have a business analytics skill set so this is not something which can be learned in a one day uh, it is over the period of time you will learn so you need to keep thinking about all these things the third thing you need to have is business communication and documentation so it's not about your verbal communication but it is also about your written communication and how you document the things it is very important to manage all the project artifacts because today you are managing the project tomorrow someone else will go so you need to have the proper documentation written very clearly very clearly articulated so that tomorrow if someone comes and sees that uh document they understand and they pick up the uh project from there onwards right next thing is the customer focus you need to be the very much customer centric okay you need to understand their need you need to communicate with them right they are the people who are going to use this software right so we need to understand what they need right we need to communicate well with them right so what is best fit for them we need to understand that so we need to very much customer centric and customer focus and the last one is the tools which you need to have like you need to understand the excel ms ms office the visios the lcs azure devops so there are different tools which are used throughout the implementation so we need to also have the understanding about those tools if you prepare yourself with all these things right and this is not a one day job it will happen so to start with start with the product knowledge and then slowly move to the upward right so that is what you need to have as skill set okay now how do you prepare yourself so these are the things which you need to have so you need to have a proper product training you can do your self learning or anything right and then how you do this you do this with a uh, basic mb 300 i'm taking the finance uh, functional consultant example so you need to all, not only the mb 310 uh, 
the 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 module which you need to understand which you need to also understand the mb30 which is the core functionalities of microsoft dynamics 365 finance and operation like data management workflow the users and also all these things right do the hands on with the lab exercises so practice uh, without practice nothing is going to happen if you just read it right develop analytical thinking so keep thinking about if there is any feature then how it will be utilized in any business right so how do you get that so think about talk about the real time projects examples uh, talk to someone uh, uh, identify your mentor that who can help you in this journey right talk about talk to them that okay how this particular feature will be used in any of the project or in any of the business right exam preparation i have highlighted in a different color it is not very important yes it is a good credentials to have but rest of the things are more important on your day job day to day jobs okay so exam preparation is just a credential like anything else right use of tools as i spoke about what tools are there i am going to talk about and the documentation which i spoke about that you need to have a very good understanding about writing the good documentations right so things like functional design document and other things okay so these are the key areas where you should start focusing identify the sources for learning all these things okay now what are the tools you need to have hands on right so start uh, uh start with microsoft dynamics 365 finance and operation for the product knowledge okay where do you read that i like talk up in the sl next slide but that is where you need to practice so that is the most critical part for your functional consultant journey use of the bpm tool the business process modeler tools like ms visio right so that you can create the process flows uh for 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 the business for the customer excel hands on is very important for us how do you pivot the data in excel uh, we look up sorting of the data so all these things are very important for us ms office for the documentation and presentations basic lcs understanding through which we manage the end to end implementation uh devops i have forgot to mention but azure devops is very important for us to understand how do we manage all the work items there use of ms teams that how do you i mean i know like most of you will be aware about but you should know that how do you share your screen record uh, the sessions and all so on right uh sharepoint uh, management and how do you access how do you manage the documents and things there so that is also again important so these are the different tools which uh, you will be seeing in most of the project when you are uh, on the projects right okay how do you learn then what are the different learning sources so you have got the microsoft official source learn.microsoft.com go and uh, search your courses like mb300 mb310 mb330 or mb335 any of the course which you identify for yourself go and search go to community.dynamics.com and i say that this is the best place where you can learn everything so the community.dynamics.com provides you the lot of blogs from the community members across uh, uh, the different streams also microsoft has lot of tech uh, talks uh, uh, i mean uploaded there which is on the recent features across different streams uh, or the different areas of the product like supply chain finance and all those things right so and also the community uh, on the community you have a forums where people come uh, and ask and they answer the questions and help each other right go and see those forums related to your areas at least you will uh, if you cannot answer anything but read that what are the problems people are facing in your areas and what how the people are helping them and what are the potential solutions are there that will develop your thinking as well the critical thinking as well right that how do you solve any problem okay and the last one is the other blogs uh, i wouldn't name any of the blog here but there are a lot of people in uh, in the community who are doing great job go and search your topic you will find lot of blogs are available go read and take the help from them and the linkedin is must you should be on linkedin follow the people who are do, contributing to the community for the jobs and for for everything so linkedin is one one place where you should be there okay so that's your learning sources of course 
my youtube channel is there so come visit my youtube channel where i'm coming and sharing the my knowledge and experience also my blog site where i have written almost 200 blogs on different topics so you go and visit and links link is in the description as well okay practice 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 you need to practice everything if you are not practicing you will find it very difficult to become a functional consultant and you will find very difficulty in your day to day job remember it's a marathon not a sprint right so you will grow along the way so if you think like i will prepare everything on a day one and then i'll go and search for the job and do things that will never happen so practice prepare yourself with the basics go in the market apply for the jobs find out good mentors learn and have patience and keep learning that's the only way you can grow as function consultant 10 years back i did not even know this product started a lot of times failed in lot of things understood the product understood the like how business works everything right so if i can do you can do okay so hopefully uh, i mean that uh, that this helps you and uh, i thought to create this uh, video uh, specifically for all the people who wants to become the functional consultant and they do not know how to start where to start how to approach right what are the things they are uh, they, uh, they need to consider while becoming the functional consultant okay i know it's a long video uh, but definitely this will help you okay and in the last one of the thing which i will try now is to continue this conversation right i'll pick up one of the area in finance and i'll talk about the end to end features and the functionalities and then i'll take it forward in a project life cycle that how i will present this to the business on the requirement gathering how i will do the fit gap or design of the solution and all those things so i'll try to do that uh and let's see how it goes that will give you the understanding about that how you take your product knowledge and apply across the project life cycle okay so that i'm going to do it uh i think that's it for this video hope uh, this is going to help you and uh create your learning path uh, to become a functional consultant and that's it for today's video uh, uh hope to see you uh, again in the next one and keep watching and uh, please do subscribe like uh, my youtube channel and that's it okay thank you and see you next time